This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models and also how you can take advantage of the 30% spring sale that is going on right now to save up on all of the amazing assets that you've always wanted to get. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we're looking at Bagapai version 6. So I did reach out to the creator and he mentioned a couple of improvements that is now available with this, did a couple of demos and now let's take a look at some of the interesting things that you can find. So to clear things out, for those who haven't, used Bagapai before it is free which means you have to go ahead and take a look at the link in the description and get it on the other hand for you to get the asset you may need to pay because the asset entails a whole lot of work to put things together so the asset currently is at 49 dollars and of course you'll be getting the asset at 30 percent off i'm still in negotiation with the creator to see if he's going to be able to extend this time as this is going to be expiring on the 23rd of march so if there is an extension, I'm going to put the discount code in the description so you can consider checking that out. But either ways, let's take a look at this new improvement and see a whole lot of things that you can get with an add-on that is as free as this one. So once you download Bagapai and you fire up Blender 3.1, because, you know, this is currently supported for 3.0 all the way to 3.1, you need to install the add-on and also the assets. Installing the assets simply means you're going to have access to all of the asset features that comes with this. But regardless of that, the add-on works with any other asset that you have. So once you have that running, if you tap N on the keyboard and you go down here, you notice that you have the bugger pie modifier. Now this is pretty impressive, but then the whole actions happen with a hotkey and the hotkey is the J key. So once you tap J, you'd notice that this add-on sort of covers most of the things you spend too much time figuring out add-ons for. We're looking at scattering, architecture, curves, boolean, management, arrays, and also the formation. So to get things up to speed, let's go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm going to throw in a simple grid and scale this grid all the way up. Now, once we do that, let's also subdivide this grid just a little bit more. And then we can add our favorite character, Suzanne. Now, once we add Suzanne right there, the next thing you need to do to get things up and running is select the character or select the object or select the asset you would like to scatter. Then select the platform or the surface, tap J on the keyboard and click on the word scatter. And in this case, it's going to ask you if you want to create proxies or if you would like to display this 100% on the viewport. Now we're just going to leave these things as they are and click on OK. So once we do that and go all the way back, you can now see what we have. Now tapping N on the keyboard reveals the Bagapai modifier panel. And from here, you can see that this has been slightly reworked to accommodate a couple of things. It also makes sense to know that in this new version, if you proceed to add, for example, a cone, and you would like to add this to the scatter, instead of selecting the object, selecting the surface, and tapping J on the keyboard and adding a brand new scatter, which would add a brand new scatter node, which is previously what you did before, that isn't something that is necessary. What you can now do is select the object, select the platform, and then click on the word add asset. Now adding the asset simply adds this asset alongside with the scatter node that existed before, and you can do this for multiple assets as well. Now, once you have all of this ready, at this point, you can seed this however you choose. And of course, if you like to work with proxy to optimize your scene even way more, you can click on the proxy button. Now this way you can go through and start doing some very incredible things. And at the same time, you can choose to turn this off and turn it back on. It also makes sense to know that the paint feature is also available. So in case you want to paint stuff, you can click on the paint and tap F on the keyboard. And of course you can proceed to paint density. So this density painting is going to tell Bagapai where and where not to scatter stuff. And once you're done, you can click on the exit button and you can choose to invert this at will. There's also the scatter paint, which means that you can actually scatter things by painting on a surface. And to do that is pretty simple. So let's just launch in real quick and I'm just going to bring in an asset in this case let's search for a cool one so I'm just going to select that asset click on the import button to bring that in select the asset select the platform which you like to scatter this asset on tap J on the keyboard and then you can scatter paint so once you do that you can go in and you can paint this asset wherever you want now this is pretty impressive as you can now take advantage of this to paint asset directly instead of scattering the asset and then painting later on. So once you have this, you can now play with the density, turn off or turn on, depending on what you want. You can turn on or turn off the proxies to get some pretty beautiful things. And by all means, if you like to explore with this, 
with the assets that exist in Bagapai, you can go ahead and do that. So in this case, you can scatter a particular asset and proceed to scatter even way more assets and control this by simply using the scattering asset texture. Or you can control this by using all of the scattering properties or modifier properties that exist within the Bagapai modifier panel. And speaking about assets, the brand new version of Bagapai now ships with 100 plus assets, which now makes the total number of assets that you'll be getting with the Bagapai version 6 modifier 232. And there is even way more things that you can get, which you can either filter through the categories or you can just launch in and start searching for those things yourself. It also makes sense that there's a couple of trees that is now available that are basically photogrammetry trees. And if you take a look at them by simply using cycles and rendering this, you can see how much quality that you can get and what details that this brings to the table. Sometimes you might be needing something that is as cool as camera calling. Now we've seen a couple of add-ons that just simply does the camera calling thing, which is good. But then Bagapai modifier even brings way more to the table with the brand new camera calling feature. So how this one works is this simple. For example, you have a camera, simply select the camera and then select the platform. And of course, if you tap J on the keyboard, you can add a cam call. So once you do that, wherever the camera is facing, that is the only place that these geometry are going to be displaced. And this is in turn going to reduce the workload on your computer. So if you like to display these assets, you can, of course, like we mentioned earlier, you can, of course, go all the way up and display this asset. And depending on where you want these assets to be displayed, you can position the camera and the assets will be displayed there. So there is no need to have assets where the camera is in looking. Furthermore, once you have this object selected and you go over to the camera calling, you can choose to play with the ratio. You can also choose to offset this and uh, this is pretty wild. Now, regardless of this feature, there is also this beautiful feature that deals with the point effector. So in this case, if you like to effect several parts and you like to drive this by a given geometry, you can also do that. Select the geometry, select the platform, switch to the point effector, and then you can use this to drive these things however you want. So pretty impressive things, but these are only dealing with the scatter. Now let's talk about the brand new architecture update that is now available with the Bagapai modifier. So in this case, if you're looking at a simple plane, and let's say we scale this plane a little bit more, once you tap J on the keyboard, you can create walls from a simple plane like this. If you click on the wall section, you can play with the height, and this is good. And we've already talked about this in previous videos of Bagapai, and it makes sense to know that once you tap J on the keyboard and go over to where you have your windows, you can now draw windows, or of course, you can always draw, but then it makes sense to always reiterate the idea that you can do this. You can see that it has a much more cooler way of presenting these windows and you can have this the way you want. So let's also go in and make another window like that. And because this is super procedural in some sense, you can of course go in and start making some modifications. And in this way, you have a very cool base to get started with making your models. But then if you do have a simple plane or a simple object on your viewport and you like to use this to create a plan and then create walls from that plan and add windows to that, this is also something that is very easy. All you need to do is to merge this to a center point and you can start extruding to create the plan that you want. Now, once you're done creating the plan, you can simply select the object, tap J on the keyboard and proceed to create walls from this. And all of these things do have parameters which you can tweak to your hat content. And you can of course find these things within the Bagapai modifier and panel. And plain walls are not the only kind of walls that you can create with Bagapai version 6. You can of course go ahead and even create brick walls. Alongside with this is a brand new set of assets, some pipes, some beam wires, some beams, some spiral stairs, floors, stairs, and also handrail. So if you select the spiral stair, for example, and you like to control these things procedurally, yes, you can. So let's say you like to play with the height, you can simply do that, play with the radius as well. And of course, if you like to invert this, you can do all of these things. A couple of stringers that you can throw in. So you might want to throw either a left stringer or a right stringer on this, and you can control these things however you choose. One other thing that is pretty impressive to note is the handrail. So with the handrail, you can also play with the height of the handrail, reduce it, increase it, depending on the kind of structure that you're going for, and you can choose to use glasses while trying to create the material of choice. Now, once you throw in a simple glass, and let's also go ahead and increase the height of the handrail to be something like this. Nice. You can preview this and also notice that you have it as glass. Something else as a new feature is the pipes. So once you have your object selected, what you can do is tap J on the keyboard, 
go over to where you have pipes and you can draw the pipes. So in this case, you can draw it and it simply snaps to surfaces and to make changes to the surfaces as easy as selecting the point and you can move this point however you want. So I can raise this point all the way to this part and you can do the very same thing to this ones as well. So to whatever part that you move this point to, you would notice that they automatically snap to it. So we can do something like that and you can see that snapping going on. Now, once you have your pipes, you can select them, press N on the keyboard, go over to the bugger pipe modifier panel, and you can choose to change this from poly to curve. Now, if you'd like to play with radius, you like to play with the beveling, the precision, the offsetting, depending on what you like to create at the end of the day, these things are right here for you to take full advantage of. There's also features for the forming object, which is pretty impressive. For those who like to play with array, there's a huge set of array features that exist that you can use to scatter things and also create some arrays for objects within your scene. So we do have the line array, the grid array, the circular, the curve, and you can also draw array on assets. If you like to Boolean stuff, there's also the union and the friends Boolean that exists. And last but not the least is the manage section. The last time we talked about manage section, it did show up with proxy and group. And now we do have save as asset. By default, how you create assets in Blender is by simply having the object selected, right click, and then you can go all the way down here and mark this as asset. And that way, the asset will be saved in your current file. And in most cases, you can now save out this file and reuse it every single time. But that is not the case with Bugapi. How you can work with asset is as simple as dragging out another viewport and change the viewport to your asset browser. Now, once you change it to the asset browser, we can select the object and I can just call this monkey. And once we have that as monkey, we can tap J on the keyboard and save as asset. And that is how easy it is. If you do have asset locations where you like to save this as an asset, you can simply select the location and click on OK. So this will be saved to that library and every single time you open up Blender, that library will be there. So if I click from the current file and go all the way to the local library, you have it right there. You want to save materials or you want to save more assets? Of course you can. We can select something as simple as what can we select right now? Yeah, we can put a mountain in there or landscape. And we can also tap J on the keyboard, save as assets, select the section that we want, click on OK, and you would have it. Now, if you don't get to see it, you can hit the refresh button and you can see it right there. And for those who are saying, OK, how do you get that? Click on file, go new, new file, and there you can have it every single time. So once you open a brand new scene and you go over to your asset browser and switch back to the local library, you can find it right there. And that's about it. For those who would like to take a look at the Bugapi modifier version 6, and probably you would like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description. They'll bring you right here where you can download this for free. At the same time, if you'd like to get the asset, you can also come through and get the asset. There's also going to be a link in the description that will bring you right here alongside the coupon code that you can use to get the assets for a specific percentage off. Speaking about percentage off, let's give a huge shout out to our sponsors, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is one of the only places on the internet where you can buy, sell, and preview your 3D models directly on the web. One of the impressive things about Sketchfab is for every model that you like to download, you can actually preview this either by the thumbnail or by simply clicking and enlarging the 3D models and previewing all of the materials that makes up the model. At the same time, if you're thinking about buying or selling your own 3D model, you can also do this on Sketchfab. For those who are thinking about saving up and purchasing some 3D models, right now is the best time for you to get this as the folks at Sketchfab are doing a spring sale that is 30% off. So this simply means that for every model that you like to get, you can now get this for 30% off by simply using the coupon code spring sale. And the spring sale is running from now till the 27th of March 2022. So if you like to purchase any of the models that you've always wanted to get, Get, and you like to get this at 30% off, you can do that. And for those looking for free models that they can use alongside with the bugger pie modifier, this is also something that you can get right here on Sketchfab. For you to get any of these models, you can simply go over to sketchfab.com, go over to explore, go to downloadables, and you would find tons and tons of free, amazing 3D models that you can get for free. And that's about it. For those who are looking for 3D models that they can get for free, or probably you would like to save up on the purchases right here on Sketchfab, or maybe you would like to get the Bugapi modifier alongside with Bugapi assets. Links to all of this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one.
peace.